G'day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. Today and over the next couple of videos, I'm going to be giving a quick little crash course on motion capture. But this is not your usual check out this quick fix kind of series. This is intended for students who need an introduction to the ins and outs of traditional motion capture pipelines. So that means that you are going to be working with optical data directly, retargeting it to animation rigs, and then editing the motion for final production. Unfortunately though, that means for anyone watching this that you will need a copy of Autodesk Motion Builder. Now, why Motion Builder? Well, it's pretty damn simple. There's literally no other tool out there on the market that can do what Motion Builder does out of the box. And for those hoping that I would do a similar series using Blender, unfortunately, that's just not possible at this time in the software to do what I'm about to talk about. However, I am hoping that toward the end of this series, I can jump back into Blender and show some alternative methods, so stay tuned. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump right in and get started. All right, so to get started, what you will need, you will need to have a mesh that is animation ready. So what I mean by that is that the edge flow is nice and clean. Um, it has uh, clean loops. Uh, it can be deformed easily um, and that you have uh, some decent anatomy to it. So I've got this character here. Um, it hasn't been rigged yet, so I can't move it yet, but we are going to make our lives a little bit easier by auto rigging it using Mixamo. So this is a standard sort of pipeline nowadays to just sort of do that hard part in uh, Mixamo, clean it up in Blender or Maya or whatever, and then jump into um, uh, Motion Builder. So we're gonna go with that pipeline as well. Um, so yeah, just keep an eye out for a few things. Firstly, again, uh, edge flow is important. Uh, secondly is scale. So make sure that your character is relatively the right scale for motion capture retargeting. So you, the big issue you have when doing motion capture is that the person in the suit will be on average around 1.8 meters tall, um, give or take obviously. And um, you wanna have your uh, armature to be relatively the same scale as well. So you don't have any major offsets in the animation. So. Um, as you can see with my 3D cursor up there, the, uh, the th cursor is at 1.8 meters at this point. So I've set my mesh to be at the same uh, scale. So what you want to do then is go ahead, select your entire mesh, export that out. I've got a quick uh, keyboard uh, shortcut for that. So FBX, um, I'm going to set it to selected objects, mesh only. Um, and if you want to make sure that you aren't exporting out your subdivisions as well, because you want to keep it really light in terms of your mesh density. Just go uh, to your render settings and set the thing to simplify, turn off all your subdivisions and you should be good to go. Um, once you've done that, export out your uh, mesh and we're ready to jump into Mixamo. So to, as you can see here, I've already done it once, so I'm gonna do it again for you guys. Uh, to get Mixamo to have an animation rig in it, just go to upload character, Navigate to your file, drag it in there, and upload it. Also make sure that all your transforms have been set, by the way. Everything's zeroed out, scales set to one, all that sort of thing. Um, your mesh should be facing the world space accurately as well. So keep that in mind. Um, just follow the prompts and let then Mixamo do the rest. So pretty simple sort of process here. All right, so if you're lucky and everything's working well, you can see that the character is deforming pretty damn well. Um, what you wanna look out for as well is that making sure that your, your mesh has hands that are splayed out enough that it can actually detect the fingers and mine was lucky enough to, de to detect those. And you can see the mesh is, oh, the, the skeleton is pretty standard, looking pretty good. Uh, it doesn't have any tune controls or anything like that. So um, it's a very basic bare bones rig, but it's perfect for motion capture. All right, once you've done that, just push next. And what you will need to do is export this out as a T pose. And right now we're set to an A pose. Now that's not really great for motion capture um, because you want to have it in T-Pose so the auto retargeting or the retargeting in, um, in Motion Builder can detect those joints. You want to have them perpendicular to the world space. I know it's annoying, but 
uh, bear with me. The nice thing though, however, is that we can easily export out a T-Pose with Mixamo by just going to download and then set the pose to T-Pose and push download and we're good to go. Once you've done that, save it to your computer. And now we're going to, um, we're going to uh, set this up for animation in Motion Builder. Now you can do this in Blender with a, re with a re, um, rigging tool that uh, is supplied by Adobe, but um, unfortunately you can't use any motion capture other than what's on the Mixamo library for that, um, with some exceptions. But with the method I'm gonna show you, you won't be able to do it. All right, cool. So we got the file. Now let's go ahead and open up Motion Builder. Now Motion Builder works natively with FBX files. That's its native file format. So um, you don't have to worry about uh, things not working between say Maya or some other software. Um, the only thing you won't be able to carry on into Blender from Motion Builder is the actual animation rigs that we're going to attach. But um, we're going to prepare this file for motion capture, retargeting other motion capture libraries to this rig. So we're going to um, start off by opening up Motion Builder and what I would suggest is in the interaction mode, set it the preset to Maya. Uh, this doesn't really make much difference for Blender people, but for Maya people, it definitely does because the default keybinds for Motion Builder in um, Motion Builder are shit. So um, set it to just the standard Maya preset. All right, now what we're gonna do is import in the, um, the file that we got here. So if we go to open and navigate to the file that we have. So if we go to mocap rigs, mail, FBX, there it is, open it up. You will see that we have the rig in T-Pose ready to go. And if you open this up in Blender as well, the rig would be there as well. Now, the cool thing is now, if we go ahead and turn on display and turn on X-Ray, you will see that we have um, the armature ready to roll. The only problem is that we can't really control it that easily. Um, and this is not ready for you know editing animation yet. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna prepare this character by characterizing it. So um, that is a thing inside of Motion Builder that allows it to sort of transfer motion capture data from other sources. And we're also going to prepare it again with a human IK rig as well, which is perfect for game development. So if you're into game development and you want to do this, this would be perfect for um, transferring some um, animation data. So what we need to do firstly um, is just, just so you know, you can navigate around. We've got our um, outliner here. We've got our um, asset browser here, which we're going to be using in a second. And then we have some filters here. And then we have our um, ability to create a character rig from this menu on the right hand side there. This is the HIK um, setup here. So what we're gonna do is, uh, firstly, I just wanna filter out this selection. I don't wanna accidentally select the mesh here. So what I'm gonna do is turn on uh, skeleton selection mask to begin with. So that may, I can only select the skeleton as you can see here, which is just what we want. Next thing I'm gonna do is go down to the asset browser over here and go to characters. And you'll see this character button here. So what we're gonna do is select this button and click and drag it and drag it right over to the, um, the root joint. So the root joint is the, um, the hips at this stage. Click that and push characterize. Select biped. And the cool thing about this is that um, Motion Builder will detect the left and right of this Mixamo rig. And it will also, um, mirror the definition. So what has happened here is that we've told Motion Builder that um, we want the motion capture to move these particular joints in the human IK rig setup. So it's basically a translator. So this is the inbuilt sort of uh, translator that's going on inside of um, Motion Builder to drive this deform rig. So what we're gonna do now is essentially create a a secondary layer of controls that um, constrain to the, um, or that constrain the rig here. So we are going to constrain the deform rig with an auto rigger essentially. And that auto rigger is human IK. 
So to do that, it's really simple. Um, go ahead, go down to uh, define, also go create control rig. Now, before I do that, I just want to explain here why the T-Pose is important. So the reason why uh, we need to export out a T-Pose from Motion Builder is that if it's offset by even a little bit, um, Motion Builder will have a hard time detecting um, the joints. And if they're not perfectly aligned to the world space, these things will turn yellow and you'll have to manually straighten out those limbs. So just make sure that when you export it out from Motion Builder, that is in T-Pose. All right, cool. So once we've done that, it's all good to go. Let's go ahead and create a control rig. We're going to set it to have FK and IK control. And you'll see here that it's pretty much instantaneous. How cool is that? And in order to test it, it's the same controls as in Maya. Um, go ahead and select the different joints. Now we can uh, turn off the uh, filter now, selection mask, just turn that off. And now we can con control the uh, selected controllers. And you can see that the HIK is now controlling the character. So what's actually happening is that it didn't make a brand new skeleton. It just made a series of controls that have then constrained to the um, uh, the deform rig, the Mixamo deform rig. So the joints of the Mixamo are still being are still driving the character. The only thing is that um, it's now the controllers that are constraining the uh, deform rig. All right, cool. So that's all done. We're ready to go for um, animation for this. But now what we need to do is actually get some motion capture data um, and then translate that or transfer that to this animation rig. And that will be in the next video. So until then, catch us and have fun. Cheers.